Okay, this video is going to have my review of the Orville Season 2, Episode 3 called Home. There are spoilers ahead, so be ready. Be ready. Be ready. And that's the truth. Hello out there, I'm the Oldest Nerd, and uh, as we said, we're talking about home. And after looking at the whole episode, uh, I have to say that uh, I was a little wary going in. I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to find here. There have been all kind of rumors going about as to what was going to happen with Halston Sage's character. And in fact, uh, this entire episode was all about Alara. Uh, well, there was one new character that was introduced. He has two esophaguses and eats all the time. Uh, should be kind of interesting. He's played by a comedian whose name escapes me at this moment. But um, you'd know him if you ever saw him. At any rate, uh, this is another uh, character study show. We've already had one where we've pretty much reintroduced most of the crew and then we had uh, one that was pretty much about Bordas and this one although it does have a nice kind of side plot to it uh, is all about Alara and the only thing I can think of is that after all the rumors of Halston Sage leaving the show uh, I was led along as to say why if she's leaving would they give her such a big show make you want to really miss her if she was inde indeed leaving and I have to admit that it kept me all the way to the end trying to figure out whether they were really going to cut her loose or if they were going to give some kind of excuse for her to be away for a while and come back or if it was going to be a clean break. And it went back and forth on that for a little while and it kind of kept you, kept your attention. If that were the only thing on there, it would have been pretty good. But uh, they added in some other things that I think that were uh, rather interesting. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we bring back Robert Picardo, the great Robert Picardo, who uh, I had the pleasure of meeting once. Nice guy. And also Peter Billingsley, who played Dr. Phlox in Enterprise. And I have to say that if you're going to cast a villain, you get somebody as likable as John Billingsley. He, he always, even when he doesn't smile, seems to have a smile on his face. He does not look like your central casting villain. And in doing so, surprises you when he turns out to be the villain in this. Um, of course, uh, the, the story revolves around uh, Alara's relationship with her family. And uh, we learn some things about her. Uh, first of all, that uh, her reasons for joining the uh, uh, the Union fleet was because she was considered to have a learning disability on Salaya. And so by leaving and joining the military, uh, she was able to gain the respect of her colleagues and uh, have the family that she feels like she never had uh, on the Orville. So um, there was that dynamic in there. And I have to say that the way that it ended, that almost twisted it, they say, oh, no, no, she's not going to stay. She's going to come back to the ship. They found a miraculous way to cure her disease. And yet she goes anyway. It, it was, but it was, it was very touching uh, at the end. And, and I have to say that the last scene where the captain opens his gift is priceless. Um, without a doubt, I think this is the best Orville episode ever, and they're going to have to work hard to come up with one as good as this. A couple of other things I noticed in there that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, uh, in a Routine meeting, Kelly comes in and asks Ed uh, about um, Yafet, who has uh, been making inquiries about the parental leave policy. And Ed says, uh, is he planning on splitting in two? And Kelly says, uh, we're not allowed to ask that. And, and we actually heard Yafet talk this time uh, in the last couple of episodes. Uh, he's been in the deep background, so uh, we know that we have not lost his... Um, 
his voice with Norm MacDonald uh, uh, totally. Just uh, they didn't have something to do with him, I suppose, in uh, previous episodes. Only one problem that I had with this is uh, similar to the problem that I had last week with uh, when they had to go and rescue the people on the dying planet. Uh, they could only put 35 people on a shuttle, and yet they have two people flying the shuttle. Could they not have modified two shuttles and had Bordas flying one and, um, and Isaac flying the other one? Does it take two people to fly one of those? Uh, I, I don't know, but we always see it seems to always be two people flying those things at once, and so maybe that's necessary. I don't know, but uh, I find that kind of interesting. Uh, it, it seemed a little too convenient that we had to sacrifice people last week just because uh, we had both people flying one shuttle. Uh, couldn't they get another one fixed? Also, something that bothered me was that if, uh, if the inhabitants of that planet last week could wear radiation suits and walk through the radiation to get on the shuttle, why couldn't members of the Orville crew wear radiation suits and walk on the planet? Why did they have to have Bordas and Isaac except to satisfy the plot? I say that because it's a similar problem this week in that um, Ed goes out in his anti-gravity suit and then uh, he gets in trouble and um, he can't be rescued because they only had one of them. Now, if they had one of them, does that mean they only have one? I mean, is he, is he the only one that's able to, that's uh, allowed to walk on Salea? I mean, Gordon uh, didn't have one fixed for him, so in case there was some kind of problem that he could get out, um, I find that interesting. A little hard to believe. That that's the only thing that I have with it. Otherwise, I thought that it was uh, a, a very well crafted, a very touching. It had a good B plot. John Billingsley, of course, was brilliant. Um, uh, Robert Picardo was great. Uh, I liked the the sister and uh, all of the uh, all of the other elements. I thought were. Uh, were good. There wasn't anything that was conveniently jumped to. Uh, it was well written, well acted, and uh, a big thumbs up on this episode of The Orville. But I want to know what you think about it. Uh, please do get back to me and uh, leave something in the comment section. And uh, of course, uh, a like would be one would be welcomed, and uh, a subscription, if you will, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. Uh, we appreciate all of the all of you who have subscribed to this channel so far. So uh, next time will be the premiere of Star Trek Discovery, and that's going to be a whole new jar of pickles, if you will, that uh, we want to go through. So uh, that's coming soon, and until then, don't go far.